The Sorcerer's Apprentice Misty had spent all morning cleaning the sorcerer's workshop, and she still hadn't finished. Wash this, polish that. I'm fed up with it. How will I ever learn to be a sorcerer like Balthazar? He never lets me do any magic. Just then, Misty heard footsteps on the stone staircase. A moment later, Balthazar appeared. Misty, I have to go into town. Waving a long shopping list, he announced. I used the last of the dragon's eggs yesterday, and we're out of goblin's toenails. Hmm, maybe I'll get a tube of Pixie's earwax, too, if it's on sale. They'd go great with spinach puffs. Misty was astonished. Balthazar had never left her alone in the castle before. So she thought, I can explore the dungeons and swim in the moat. Or just sit in the sun and do nothing at all. Yippee! A free afternoon! But Balthazar had a different idea. There's plenty to do while I'm out. For a start, this floor could do with a good scrub. Look! I've just stepped on a toadstool. Rats, there goes my free afternoon. Balthazar added with a frown. Oh, and one more thing. Don't try any spells. Or I'll turn you into a tadpole. He threatened, his bushy eyebrows bristling. With that, there was a flash of light and puff of purple smoke. The sorcerer was gone. Well, don't just sit there. You have work to do. It was Daphne, Balthazar's pet toad. Oh, hop it. I've been working all morning. I need a rest first. Daphne hopped onto a broomstick. Seeing Daphne perched on the broom had given her a brilliant idea. Last week, Balthazar had cast a spell on a broomstick. It had come to life and done everything the sorcerer asked. I'm sure I can remember the spell. How hard can it be? You're up to something. You better not try any spells. You heard what Balthazar said. Ignoring her, Misty closed her eyes. Taking a deep breath, she said the magic words. Old servant, now's the time to feel the power of my rhyme. Dreamless, slumbering, forsake. Your master calls you, slave. Awake! All at once, the broom began to twitch. It shook and shuddered. Then slowly, it grew two skinny arms and two skinny legs. Misty ordered the broom. Now! Fetch me some water. The broom ran off. In no time, Misty heard it coming tap, tap, tap down the steps. It poured the water into the tank and set off for more. Then Misty flopped down in the sorcerer's chair. Soon, she was fast asleep. Misty woke up to find Daphne hopping on her lap. So sleepily, she mumbled. What is it? Quick! The tank is overflowing and the broom won't stop. Misty jumped to her feet. Water was sloshing over the sides of the tank. And the broom was clattering down the steps again. Stop! That's enough! But the broom took no notice. Streams of water poured across the floor. Great stuttering sorcerer! Just say the spell! What spell? Then she remembered. Of course, she needed a spell to make the broom stop. Oh no, I am... I don't think I know it. Oh, girl. By now, the water was ankle deep, and still the broom was fetching more. I'll look in Balthazar's spell book. Let's see. Misty flicked through page after page. This is hopeless. There are thousands of spells here. I'll never find the right one. What am I going to do? You could chop the broom up. Good thinking. She grabbed an axe, lifted it high above her head, and swung it down hard. With a loud crack. The broomstick split in two. Thanks, Daphne. You're brilliant. Daphne? What's wrong? Look at the broom! Misty's eyes opened wide. The two pieces of the broom were moving. And each piece was growing new arms and legs. 
faster than ever, the brooms raced off for more water. I'm in big trouble now. In no time, the brooms are back, sloshing water everywhere. Misty tried to stop them. She tried tripping them. She even tried to sit on them. But it was no use. I give up. Balthazar is going to be furious. I wonder what it's like to be a tadpole. Meanwhile, the brooms were still dashing in and out, up and down the steps. The water was getting deeper. Soon it reached Misty's knees, then her waist, then her chest. Splash, splosh. The brooms flung a few more pails of water into the room. Waves washed across the workshop. Daphne shot past, trying to surf. I warned you not to try any spells. Help! She yelled, climbing onto the table. Somebody help! Suddenly, there was a loud pop. Balthazar appeared in a shower of green sparks. Before he could catch his breath, the two brooms flew down the steps and flung yet more water into the workshop. Galloping goblins! What has that girl been doing? Quickly, he raised his wand and spoke the magic words. Lest this maelstrom increase, your hellish trickery is done. From wood and bristle, sprite, be gone. In a flash, one of the brooms vanished. The other stood neatly to one side. Finally, with a loud glug, 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 the water began to drain away. Nervously, Misty climbed down from the table. Balthazar glared at her. Well, what have you got to say for yourself? Um, I'm sorry. Not good enough. I warned you. Now it's tadpole time. Misty dived behind the water tank. Please don't turn me into a tadpole. I will never meddle with magic again. No, you won't. Tadpoles certainly can't do tricky spells. He paused and thought for a second. Hmm. That was quite a difficult spell she did. She might be a good sorcerer one day. Maybe you should start teaching her magic. She is your apprentice after all. He turned to Misty. If you ever disobey me again, it'll be frog spawn in the moat. From that day on, Misty was a perfect pupil. Soon she learned how to do spells properly. And when she grew up, she became a great sorcerer. The End If you enjoyed this story, please like and subscribe our channel and press the bell icon to get future updates. And don't forget to comment!